All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And I had a few people message me. They watched a couple of my videos and saw the uh, art library feature that I was using in Lightburn and didn't understand it. And I didn't either when I first got the software. I just kind of got in there and figured it out. But I'm going to try to save you a little headache today, and I'll walk you through the process of using the library, setting it up, and show you how I do it. As always, I'm not an expert, and I don't work for Lightburn or any of the other companies. I do this for a hobby, and I've learned some things. I'm just going to pass those along to you. So if you like this kind of stuff, if this is helpful, and uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. So here we go. I'm just going to go, and we're going to start from scratch with no art library whatsoever to kind of demonstrate how you get that thing to show up. So you just click up here at the window, and if you look down through here, you got all these little uh, buttons that you can add. If you'll just check that one, it says art library, it will, uh, it'll populate this screen. Now, yours is not going to look like mine until you create a library. I can load my library because I have it saved, and I don't save it locally. Uh, I save it on a, on a drive that's on my network is where all my art stays. Uh, that way I got, it's, it's on a, a different location in case my laptop dies. But once you get that art library created, you got all these things in there, then, uh, then you can load them, and you don't have to go through the process of reassigning burns or anything like that as far as like you can set these for whatever you want them to burn at and just drag them over to your workspace you can just drag and drop as many of these guys in your workspace as you want and put them together uh, it, it makes it a lot simpler you ain't got to go looking for files and typically i keep things in here that i use on a regular basis uh like i have like i even have this horse fly is gonna get me I even have like these little shapes here. <clears throat> I drop the whole the whole lot of them in my art file, and then if I figure out, you know, okay, I want, you know, I want this one. I don't want the rest of them. I just take that right there, and I cut that one out, and I'll delete the rest of them, and then paste that one back in, and then I can resize it to make it the shape that I want, or you know, whatever the case may be. But you get the idea. So you can even do bulk, like bulk prints and stuff if you got them. Uh, big thing around here is horseshoes, so I got me a horseshoe in there. I'll put that on a bunch of designs. So the way that you're going to want to, and then a grid, you know, I need a grid, I got a grid. So it's just, you can put anything in here that you want. Uh, but I'll walk you through right quick. I'm going to unload my library so that I have nothing in my library, and I'm going to pretend that we are starting from scratch. Like you just installed Lightburn, you don't got anything on your machine, and we'll go. Let me turn this vacuum table off. I had a burn going, and it's finally finished, so that might be a little quieter. Uh, so we're going to pretend that you don't have a library, and I'm just going to walk you through the process of getting that started. So what you're going to want to do is there's a button down here. Once you have this, like I said, if you don't have the window, go up to window. Put a check mark beside art library, and then you're going to want to create a new library. I use uh, a network location, but you can use a thumb drive, you can use a removable drive, you can put it on your local disk, wherever you want to put it. Uh, that doesn't really matter. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do test art files because I'm going to delete this when we're done here, and then just save that to that location. Once it creates that database, then anything that goes in here will will be you know you can add it to it so i'm gonna i'm gonna go over here to my downloads folder and import something and we'll turn it into a burn okay there's one we'll do this one all right so once you get this in here you can import it from the project as is if you're bringing something in but and, and in like the case of this one, this is a PNG that I made in uh, Photoshop. But when I bring them in, I usually go ahead and trace them because I want just a burn profile. I don't want all that white space. And so once you get that in here, you, you can just get it to the size that you want it to come in. 
like whenever you drag this thing over, set it to the side. If you, if you drag it over and it's like this big, it's going to be that big when you drag it in. So just set the size of how big you want it to be when you drag it in. Click on it so that you got the brackets. This is highlighted. And then right here, there's a button that says import graphic from project. And just click that button. And then you're going to want to name it something pony, little pony pub. This is a logo that somebody wanted. So there you go. And now we have that. You, you'll see it's over here. So when I drag it in, like I said, set the size because I'm going to demonstrate here. And I learned this the hard way. If you got it that big and you hit add graphic to pro, oh, shoot. If you got it that big and you hit import graphic, and we're going to name it huge because it is huge. All right. And then you, you know, you got your normal workspace like this and you grab this file here and bring it in. It's going to be that big. So before you save it to your library, go ahead and uh, set the shape that you want it to come in as. If it's something that you use a lot that you want to set size, be sure to set that size before you save it. So you don't have to resize it every time you bring it out. Uh, if you decide that there's something in your library that you no longer need, then you can delete. And it's that simple. Now, it's not going to delete this one. you got to manually delete that out of there. So I'm going to bring a couple more files in and just walk you through the process so everybody has a chance to uh, see what's going on here. Uh, okay, like say you wanted to do a cow. All right, you want to add a cow to your library. You bring that, you know, clip art or whatever in there, digital file, and then you can just trace it. Okay. Make the cow the size that you want him to be in your library. So that's a good, decent size for a cow on my workspace. So then I'm going to click the cow, import graphic for project. I'm just going to name it cow. All right. So now I have a cow. It's that simple. Uh, you can drag these things. I think you can actually double click them too. Yeah. But I usually drag because I, I when, when you drag, no, 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 I don't want to do that yet. When you drag it, you can actually kind of place it. So I like dragging better than just double clicking. Because if you double click it, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to add it wherever it was in the workspace when you when you added it to your library it's going to put it back there so if, if you're wanting to put like this logo and then you decide you you know you got this logo and you want to put a cow on it you can actually drag and you can drop the cow the center of the cow is going to go to wherever your mouse is and you can do uh, you know but that's how that works and you can even take and once you get these in you can group those around each other and then you can even save it as a another file. You can just keep grouping like things that are in your library. So I've accumulated quite the library. I try to keep it cleaned out uh, stuff that I don't use anymore because it gets a little hectic uh, kind of scrolling through there. But that's how you do it. And like I said, once you get ready to uh, and, and if let's just say uh, once my collection gets so large, what I plan to do is I'm going to move files from one art collection to the other. <coughs> but as of right now, I'm managing it. But the way this is set up, you can actually have multiple uh, art libraries as well. So I can go in here and go to load and I can go back to the shared drive, <coughs> even though that art library is currently here, I can switch over to my other one, my original one. So there you have it, these darn flies. So there you have it guys, that's the short, sweet and simple way of creating your art library. Like I said, not a professional, there may be a better way of doing it elsewhere. I can take those off now that that's through burning. There may be a better way of doing it, uh, but this will get you started. This is what I've used and it has worked for me for several months now. Uh, 
the uh, cool thing that I like is, like I said, by using a network connection, a network location for my art library, I can actually go in here because I know where that location is. If I need to get a new machine or whatever, I can go in here and and export this library. I could like email you my library if I wanted to, if it was small enough or whatever. So, but that's uh that's how it works. So. If you like the video, give me a little bit of feedback. Let me know. I'm trying to get my money's worth out of this software because uh, I had to buy Snagit in order to do these videos to help people out. And so I'm trying to get my money's worth out of it and throw these little videos out there when people post questions to me. And apparently somebody had saw my art library in the last couple of videos I did and wanted to know how to get it to show up. And I'm assuming if you don't know how to get it to show up, you probably haven't been using it. So you haven't put any items in there. So I wanted to explain that. To you so thanks for uh, joining me and have a good day